Hello there, I'm a lot of jewelry makers. I'm Christina of CSL Designs and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to make your own head pins. So these three designs are inspired by flowers and nature and will add a lovely decorative touch to whatever jewelry you're using them for. So if you want to learn how to make them, then keep watching! So to make these head pins, all I'm going to be using is this wire here and this is a 0.8mm and it's going to work well for the designs and it's also strong enough to use as a head pin. Now I'm just going to tell you the lengths that I'm working with in this case here, but of course you can use different lengths of wire depending on the size head pin that you need. And this is then a selection of pliers that I'll be using for the different designs. Now of course first of all I've got my flush cutters and also I've got my tweezers nose pliers or chain nose that I pretty much use for everything both of these. I will also then be using some round nose pliers and also my six step bell making pliers as well. Again, you can use round nose pliers instead of these, but I personally prefer to use them just because you know exactly what size you're gonna get. Now, of course, you can check out the description box below the video like usual where I'm gonna leave links that might be helpful. Otherwise, let's get our wire and our pliers ready and let's get started making our own head pins. So firstly, I'm gonna show you how to make this three leaf head pin design where the head pin itself adds a lovely decorative touch to whatever you're using them for. So for this design, I've cut a length of my 0.8 mil of about 20 centimeters. So I'm gonna grab a length of wire here and I'm also gonna be using my six step bell making pliers and I'm gonna be using the second largest step in this case. Now you can easily use larger or smaller. It's completely up to you and the look that you want because the size will change also ultimately the size of the actual design. So I'm just gonna place my pliers on my wire, making sure I leave a short tail there. So I'm towards one end, but I'm making sure I'm leaving a bit of length, maybe about five centimeters or so. It's really just to be able to wrap around at the end. And then I need to start bringing the long end here around the step that I want it the size of, all the way around and then bringing it underneath as I'm coming around towards the other end of the wire. And you can see it's overlapping, so we now have a full circle. I then, just wanna make sure it's nice and tight, I wanna keep going and I'm basically gonna then have this laying just below itself, so we're creating, you could say, another circle right below the first one. We're making sure that the wire is laying flat next to itself, really. So, currently we have two on top of each other. Mine is obviously here where the wire overlaps, or the ends overlap. But what I want is three full go-arounds here, so three full circles on top of each other. So we end up with something a bit like this. So from one side here, you can see it kind of just looks like a circle, but then from the side, you can see there's actually three on top of each other. Now, what I'm also making sure of is that the ends here kind of, they overlap and just kind of overlap a bit beyond a straight angle. So just roughly something like this. So this is our starting position. Next, I'm then gonna grab my tweezer nose pliers here just because they have a nice fine tip but can still get a nice grip. And we need to start manipulating these rings that we made into the actual individual petals. So this is kind of my longer end. This is the short end that I left to begin with. So what I'm gonna do is right kind of on the inside of that longer end. I'm gonna grab onto the rings, but literally right up against the wire, they're coming straight out, but only the very bottom ring. So if you can see, my pliers are only grabbing onto the bottom ring there. And make sure to grab that nice and tight. Now what I'm then gonna do is the top two rings that my pliers are not grabbing onto, I need to push them, so just Use your nails here, and your fingers. Grab onto those two top rings, and while you're holding onto that bottom ring with your pliers, push them to the side. Kind of manipulate, bringing that single wire out 
on its own to then the other two to sit right next to it. So something like this. So you can see, looking from the side, we've now separated. So we have the first one that we grabbed onto there with the pliers is now on its own. But then these two are still on top of each other. But we've now separated out the first petal, you could say. Then I'm gonna grab onto these two rings on top of each other, we also need to separate. So I'm grabbing onto, this is now on the other side of that straight wire, but right where that bend that we just made is, on the other side of it, as close to it as you can get. And now I'm grabbing onto, if you can see, two rings technically, or across two wires from this side, because that then leaves the top ring free to be pushed just like we did before, but now it's just the top one by itself. Make sure you grab onto those nicely with the pliers and bring this ring out and then sit next to the one we just separated it from. So we now separated all the rings instead of being on top of each other, they're now basically next to each other and almost creating a little Mickey Mouse look with the head and the two ears, even though the ears are quite large. But this is basically the basic shape. So we, all these rings are going to be individual petals sitting like this. But we just still need to do a bit of reshaping because obviously right now they're completely round. Now to make them a bit more petal shaped or leaf shaped, whatever you want to call it, I'm going to then take some round nose pliers, just some basic round nose pliers will do. And what we need to then do is start with whatever petal that you want to, doesn't matter. Going to be working with one at a time. And what we need to do is place, and placing them very much towards the tip of the pliers there to get it as fine as possible. And I'm placing my pliers where I want kind of the tip, you could say, of the petal to be. So I'm placing my pliers roughly there and then what you can do is literally keep hold of your pliers nicely on the wire and then I'm using, tend to use my thumb here to then push on one side and basically you could say close up the circle into more of a little petal shape like this or leaf shape. Now obviously this looks a little bit weird, but then remove your pliers and then grab hold of your piece nicely. So you don't want these others to move right now, but then keep hold of right before where this petal we're working with is, and then also this long end. And then you just wanna gently start pushing them back open. Because basically then what's happened is kind of adding a little point into it instead of just having that round shape and that creates more of that leaf shape or petal shape. Now of course you can adjust it however you want to. Until you're happy with how the specific petal or leaf looks. You can also kind of tighten up the point more. Again, it's all down to how you want yours to look. But we have then something roughly a bit like that. Now, of course, this is just the one and literally you just wanna go around and do the same thing to all of them. So I'm just gonna to go to the middle one now. Place the round nose pliers roughly where you want that point to be and then push right up against the pliers on one side there with the wire. Remove the pliers and then literally grabbing basically each of the other two leaves and then just gently kind of push it back open into the position it was before. But now we've added in that little point at the tip and of course just want to do the same with the last one. 
it's all roughly there. Push against the pliers and then just gently open it back up until you then have your petals, all of them with then with a point in it or your leaves, whatever you want to call them. And then of course you can just take your time and reposition anything that you want. Now, while everything is still loose, you can tighten up the points if you want to. But then this is basically how we first of all have created the petals individually and then also added a little bit of extra design to make them more petal or leaf-like. So now we have the basic design for the headpin in place. All that's left to do is finish it off. So what I'm going to do is this back wire here is the longer one of mine. So I'm going to put my pliers right down, basically in between all the petals because obviously right now it's coming out at an angle. We want it to come straight up from the petals here. So I'm just going to place my pliers where I want the angle to be and then put a bend into it so it comes straight up so something a bit like that adjust it if you need to because then this is going to be the length that's going to be part of the head pin. Now the other end there, this is the length that we left in the beginning, just a short length, because all we're going to use this for now is to wrap around the other one, just to kind of fasten it and finish it off. So that means it's already coming in front, so I'm just going to kind of use the position it's in to wrap around in that direction. Now just make sure that you grab hold of the design nicely so it doesn't kind of move while we're maneuvering this wire. So I'm bringing it down, basically right against that bend that we made. And then all we gotta do is start wrapping this around. Now I'm trying to do it carefully again, so I'm not pulling on the wire to kind of pull any of the petals of my design here out of shape. Just keep checking on it. And also, if you need to, use pliers to help make it nice and tight and also push it down into place. Now that's one wrap. I'd like to just bring it around one more time. So I have two wraps there, something like this. Just make sure it's tight around. And then also I push the wraps against each other if I need to, to make sure there's not a gap. And then it's coming out on the back. All we're going to do is cut off the excess. And then, of course, that very end of the wire is going to be sticking out a little bit. So make sure to squeeze that in. Make it nice and tight. And basically, this is a finished head pin. So that's how you make the three leaf head pin design here. As you can see, I have a silver and a copper, and it gives that really cute effect with the actual head pin itself, but obviously it's also practical. Now this one, the silver one, originally I made when I came up with the idea for these and turned them into some earrings. So you can see how decorative that adds to the beads as well. So that's this design here. Next, we're going to make these five petal flower head pins that will be both cute and fun in any design. So for this design, I'm using a length of my 0.8 mil of about 20 centimeters. So I'll be using my six step bell making pliers to help make this design here. And I'm going to use the second smallest step in this case. Now you can easily use round nose pliers. Just try and make sure you make your loops the same size. So I'm grabbing my wire here and then my pliers I'm going to place towards one end but I want to make sure I'm leaving just a bit of length here again just to use that to finish it off with. So I'm placing my pliers and I'm going to start wrapping the wire around my pliers on that step the size that I want and I'm going to make sure to bring it below the other tail there. 
and just bring it all the way around to create a full circle something like that and basically just keep going so put it back in and just keep making circles there below each other so they build up right on top of each other there so what do we have we have three now what we need in total is five petals so that's the fourth one we need to go another round creating that fifth petal so we have that now if we just double check one two three four five yep and so far the wires are basically going straight out to the sides opposite each other now what i just want to do is actually bring this length just around a bit more just to kind of account for extra wire that's going to be used up so i have my wire looking something like this now so take away the pliers and you can see we kind of have a little coil of rings of wire almost stacked on top of each other and i'm then grabbing my tweeds and nose pliers here because they have a nice fine tip there but also they grab onto the wire nicely so first of all i'm making sure that the longest end that i've got left is where I start and the other wire there is kind of at the top of it all. Now I'm going to place my pliers right where this excess wire starts to go straight. So the end of it. And then we want to make sure we cover, if you're looking next to the pliers there, we put the pliers on the bottom two wires or you kind of see the bottom two rings there. Because what we're then going to do is separate these circles from each other uh, grabbing onto my pliers there so that bottom circle is gonna stay in place because of the pliers and then I'm kind of I kind of like to try and get my nail in between then the bottom two rings kind of separate them out and then I kind of grab onto the rest of them and push them away from the first one there the bottom one where we have the pliers grabbing onto it but try and make sure everything always stays intact shape wise we just want to push them apart from each other but not actually change any shapes or anything so push it kind of to the side again we just we're actually technically pushing the top rings against the pliers and the pliers are holding on to the bottom ring so by going across two wires there that means we're basically separating out the very bottom one. As you can see, there's just one ring there. So that's the first one. Now, moving on to the next one. So that means placing your pliers, again, literally right on the other side of the bend. And then again, on this side of the plier, you want to make sure to grab the bottom two wires and then on the other side here just separate out the bottom two with your nails if you can like that and then again just push the top ones to the side again against the pliers so something a bit like that you can see that separated out the second one and it doesn't have to be perfect just yet because we can do little adjustments as you can see we can maneuver them further from each other closer to each other flatten things out as well but that's two separated all we got to do is continue again go on the other side of that bend grab onto the bottom two pliers sorry not pliers wires with the pliers and then push now we have two on top that we need to push which then separates out the bottom one i'm just trying to push these every time about the same amount between each other like i said don't worry too much about it because it can be adjusted as you can see we're separating them out and getting some petals here and then now 
If we're looking at the rings on top of each other, we only have two left. So that means this one is going to be the last one that we do. I've also made sure that that little tail that keeps kind of moving around with the rings it just goes over the top of the other one once they start to cross over. Again, place your pliers on top of two wires. So when we look on the other side, we can separate out the two rings that we have left and now only push the very top one. Again, in the same way. So obviously it can be a little bit fiddly because it is quite small rings that we're working with. You can obviously do this differently. You can, you say, make bigger circles depending how you want your final result to look. So that is completely up to you. But you then push it like this separate it out, get it into position and then let's just have a little look. You can then kind of see that we achieve this little flower shape. Now this is where before we kind of continue you can make any little adjustments if you want. So take your pliers, go back in. If you need to open anything up a bit more or move anything in a different direction. And also you can flatten it out. I kind of like to flatten out the petals next to each other so they don't kind of have two big gaps between them. And also obviously makes the whole piece a bit flatter. So just make any little adjustments until you're happy with your flower shape basically and we then have both of these two ends of the wires coming up right next to each other. Now of course we then just have to finish it off so I'm taking my tweezer nose pliers again and then just making sure the longest length I have I grab onto that basically right where it's coming and becoming straight from that initial circle. So grabbing onto that there, and then I want to, instead of it coming out at an, at an angle like this, I want it to come straight up. From that, kind of in between them to the first and the last petal you could say. And then that is ready for the other wire you can see it's naturally crossing over the top of it. For then this to just bring it down next to it and then basically we just need to wrap this end around it. Just to finish it off and obviously secure it in place as well. So just wrap it around a couple of times. Making sure your wraps are nice and tight. And then all that's left to do is cut off the excess. Get rid of that. And of course, just flatten down that very end of the wire. And then you have your finished head pin ready to use. Now it would also be really cute, I think, if you could kind of decorate with a little bead or something in the very center and then have the petals around that would add a little bit extra to this head pin and obviously you can use it for whatever you want to. And then our flower head pins here with the five petals on add a really fun and cute design I think to whatever you use them for. As you can see here just add for the same theme I added those flower beads here just to show you the copper and the silver version. So that's what these look like. And finally we're going to make these elegant rose head pins and these are double sided so you don't have to worry about a front and a back. Now for this rose design I'll be using a length of my 0.8mm of about 40 centimeters. Now what I'm just going to do is measure in from one end just to be a little bit more precise. 
And then using my round nose pliers, I'm going to measure in 15 centimeters, just approximately, from one end of the wire. So I have about 15 centimeters here, and then this end is longer. And from this point, what I want to do is create an initial little loop. So I'm just going to bring my wire around the pliers all the way to basically create a full circle and have them overlap something like this. So you can see we basically added just a little circle into the wire. And now with the pliers still in that circle, I'm going to use them just to keep hold of the wire for now. We need to start making our first rows. So you can see the wire here is crossing next to each other and this length is below and this length on the right is kind of on top. So using that, I'm going to twist them kind of against each other to you could kind of call it, say, make them interlock. So we get a little twist there where they meet. And now basically this is going to be the starting point in the very center of our rows. And that's just made in the regular way if you're familiar with that. So also as you can see that's why I'm kind of using the pliers to hold on to it because we only have that little loop to hold on to and that will be very fiddly with our fingers. So I'm just going to take now that they're twisted together take one length, bring it around towards the other length and just make sure to kind of follow along the outside of the other wires in the middle there and then I want to bring it underneath the other wire and out in front and then you can see make it nice and tight so this now is almost looking a bit like a rosebud and then this is the front wire now we'll go to the other wire, that's the back wire bring that towards the other one underneath it and then make sure it's tight and now this is the new front wire so they keep swapping places like this and you basically keep doing the same thing so the wires are chasing each other and technically they're actually twisting while we're making a spiral and that's how we create that effect of the rows kind of make it look like petals so just continue doing this and we're growing the rows gradually more and more in size and make sure that it is expanding outward in size like that so the spiral basically is flat as much as possible so it's not kind of growing upwards or anything so they're overlapping now it's up to you really how large you want your rows to be on the head pin. Obviously that might depend what you plan to use it for, but just keep going until you reach the size you want it to be. I think I'm almost there with mine. I think just a little bit more. I always like to kind of try and keep it a bit symmetrical. So the center of the rows there is kind of as much as possible in the center of it once we have the size that we want. So let's have a little look. I think we're about there. Maybe one more. I don't want it to get too large. So I think this is it. Now let's stop here. And then you can see we have the rows on the side. I've taken up the pliers. So on the back there, we still have that circle that we made kind of sticking out from the center of the rows on the back. So we actually want to use this little loop now because what we need to do with these ends is actually bring them through that loop. So one at a time, I'm just going to take this one first. doesn't really matter. And I'm just taking the vent up on this side here. So I'm just going to go through the loop in whatever direction is convenient. So just bring it straight through. Out 
to the other side and just try and obviously keep the shape you created so far in place. Make sure to keep checking on it. Now the other wire also bring it through the loop in the same way. All the way through. And then just make sure here on the rows on the front it kind of finishes off nicely. So something a bit like that. I'm happy with how that looks. And then on the back here we have the two wires coming out next to each other again straight through that loop. Then what I'm going to do is before continuing I'm going to flatten this loop down because it is a pretty small loop but still flattening it will just kind of help not have it be more bulky than it needs to be. So I'm just going to kind of bring it to one side and then flatten it down on top of the wires like that. Just need to pull that through a bit. There we go. So now we have one side done. So that means from this point here we can use the remaining wires that we have and create the other side so we can make that double sided row so it doesn't matter what side is flipping forward or back. So we're going to create that rose in the same way but we just need to start at the very center of it and because we don't have that initial loop here what I'm just going to do is one of the wires I'm just going to basically bend upwards straight up here away from the middle and that's just kind of sticking straight out. Now the other wire I'm going to take and basically wrap around it at the very base where the wires are coming out from something a little bit like that and it's that kind of initial loop here in the center that creates kind of the rose but look in the center but obviously as it grows just the very center of the rose now I've brought this more or less all the way around then of course it's time to incorporate the other one as well so I'm just going to kind of lay it down over the top of that circle you could say we brought around it and then start to bring that around and basically straight away going into the technique of making the rows. So the wire that I brought around, the one that was sticking straight up was the front one. This one I've just kind of bent down and bring it around, chasing the other one, then underneath to become the new front one. And we then just continue. Now here you can see I'm just kind of holding on to everything with my fingers. There's a little bit more now to grab onto because we already made the one side of the rows. But you literally just keep the wires here chasing each other. And again, so the rows grows outward. Now obviously the aim with this is for this side to basically mimic the other side that we already made in size, just to make them match nicely. So just keep going until it does that. So now that I reach that point, we can see this side that I'm currently working on matches nicely with the other side. So it's not obvious that there's anything kind of sticking out. So I just want to now finish this off. So this length of wire is the one that I'm just going to bring around next. Now what I'm going to do instead of just continue to obviously grow the rows is you do have the first side of the rows and the current side that we're working on, which means that there is actually kind of a gap between them. So I'm going to take this wire and make sure it comes actually, instead of growing the rows, going in between the two sides and kind of bring it around a bit further, almost wrapping around a bit the very middle where the two sides are connected. And then just have it come out further up here. Now the other side, or the other wire, sorry, obviously just needs to be brought with it as well and finished off. Now what I'm just going to do is, because I'm pretty happy with how it looks, I'm going to cut it down. Now obviously you might have more length left, just cut off what you need to just so we have a short length here. 
that I can then take my tweezer nose and just the very tip I like to just bend inwards towards the rose so it's kind of sticking in towards there because then I take my pliers and push this in also in between the two layers you could say so that end of the wire is going to get tucked right in there and obviously not sticking out so it's going to catch or scratch on anything and then we have this wire coming out now if you need to you can literally take your chain nose or tweezer nose pliers flat nose and just give a little bend if you need to straighten it up the angle from where it's coming out or anything otherwise if it's coming out nicely this is basically a finished head pin with a nice rose on the end and as you can see you can easily make them in different sizes so the large one there the largest one of them is the one that I just showed you how to make and the other ones are a bit smaller right down to this one that's pretty small and you can make them even smaller almost a bit like a rosebud if you want to so it's completely up to you and obviously the look that you want and then just to show you the rose head pin with some beads on them so as you can see the silver and the copper one and I just added a butterfly bead and then an actual other flower bead there and it just adds a really cute design on the bottom with those roses and like I said they are double sided so it does not matter if they flip around or if you use them for something that's going to have a lot of movement to it. So I really hope you enjoyed learning how to make these flower inspired head pin designs because I think it's really fun to be able to make your own head pins as it adds a very personal touch to whatever jewellery you're making. So I really hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching it and I'll see you in the next one.